Good. Let's get started. Yep. Yeah, I think it's uh, sitting at a good number. Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome and uh, to another session of uh, Specflow webinars. Um, my name is Ali Malone Seni. I'm the technical writer here at Specflow, and I've got Andreas Willis, our community manager, with us today. Um, Andy, can you tell us what the webinar is about today? Um, so, hello, everybody. Um, webinar today is, is has this nice name Enhance Your Living Documentation with Text, Images, and Files. Um, will be about yeah two parts. First, how you do output and handle text images and so general inspectful, and then how we get this into our living documentation. Awesome. Um, just a few guidelines before we start the webinar. Please use the Q and A tool in the Zoom at the bottom to ask questions. Don't use the chat function. It gets it gets messy in there. It's hard for us to keep up with. Um, if the question is relevant to what Andy's presenting at the moment, I will try to interrupt him and ask the question. And there will be two polls, one at the start and one at the end. And as always, the webinar will be recorded and it will be on our YouTube channel. I will, uh, I already pasted the YouTube channel link in the chat, but um, it will be in the slides as well later on. And you get in two days an email from Zoom, um, where is also the link to the YouTube channel. Ah, cool, there you go. Did not know that. All yeah, right. I um, configured this this time. Ah, sweet. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm gonna launch the first poll. Just a very simple question. Yeah. For our Sad. audience, um, what is your role in the team that you're working in? Um, are you a business analyst, product owner, developer, tester, a manager, or any other stakeholder or other? <laughs> Give everyone a few minutes. It helps. It's fairly easy, isn't it? Yeah, and it helps us a little bit to go. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, dynamic in, in different parts. What we show today, okay. Good to see the testers are beating the developers. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have yeah. definitely, definitely leader. Or... Yeah, the testers are leading it, it, this. So Last time we had a race between two roles. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we've had a fair few number. I'm going to end this and also share it with everyone. Um, yeah. So half of you out there are testers joining this webinar, followed by developers, BAs, um, managers, other stakeholders, and only 1% product owners. Hmm. That lonely product owner. Hi to you. Um, <laughs> all right, Andy, um, I think we can proceed to the next step. Good. Yeah. So, um, if you used Specflow before, um, you often got into the, you needed to output something to have in your logs, in your execution log, logs, some additional information. And in the past it was a little bit, yeah, you can't, you can do it. No, no question. But you had to use the unit test runners <clears throat> specific APIs. So there was for MS test, you had on a, the test context, you needed an instance, you had two methods, write line and add result file. So for normal text and for some attachments. In any unit, you had also a text context class, a different one that MS test. We've had static methods with write line and add test attachment. In X unit, you need an instance of the iTest output helper, where you only have a write line method and doesn't have support any support for test attachment. And if you use the Specful Plus runner, you had to use console write line because it's all static. And I personally, I have I, I, this is a uh, is is is. A, pain for me because it's, it's it's you have to know so much things uh how to use it and it's 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 a mess for me this is a mess it's com everything is in every run it's different if you switch it's complicated and <clears throat> so we had years ago already an, an idea and we now implemented it to have one api to rule them all um so what we have now added with spec plus 3.8 we call it here output in the future is we have a dedicated API now. It's on the you need an instance of the iSpec output helper 
and you have two methods, write line and add attachment. And in the background, we are doing all the magic stuff. So we are calling the right methods for you. You don't have to think anymore uh, on which runner you are. Um, it often depends. I had teams, worked on two teams at the same time. The one is using N unit, the one is using X unit. Um, so remembering two APIs, how to do it. This time is now gone with spec plus rate. Uh, you have this interface. This interface is already existing before. With, with right line, add attachment is new with 3.8. And how does this look like? A quick, quick demo. <clears throat> so, um, hope you can read this all. Um, so, what I have here is a, a, a sample project. This is a, a ASP.NET MVC application uh, that we are testing with uh, Selenium. Via yeah, browser, and I have uh, two two uh, hooks here for logging purposes. One is the after step uh, after step hook where we make a screenshot. <clears throat> Sorry, and the second one is a before scenario where we look um, how many entries in a database are if it's really clear. Um, let's have a look at this before scenario. So what we do here, we have here the spec for output helper. We get this via context injection. We get the instance and then we have Rattler method, number of entries, normal string, quite straightforward. Um, for the after step book, we can, we have the same instance here and we have here two, two uh, calls. First, again, the right line to have some additional information where we are currently. And then we added the attachment, we add the screenshot, what we did from the browser. And when we look now, look, I executed the scenarios before. When we have a look at the test output, we have now our normal standard output. I'm using here N unit. So we're using the N unit APIs. And so we have here now our, um, right line calls in the log and you can see here at attachment and unit supports its attachments we have here then all the screenshots we are doing so after each uh step you see the screenshot let's have one. this is probably the last one yes this is the last one so yeah this, this API makes it easy um, to use this functionality and don't have to remember. I have only to remember this one interface and the two methods. And it's integrated uh, well in all the, all the test runs. Um, Andy, can you give us some yep. um, background on what uh, the, the application here, but uh, what was it testing for? It was testing different fields in a web so, app? Sorry, sorry, yeah. So the application is, I can quickly start the application. Yeah, I guess give us some context on how those screenshots would be useful. So um, the sample code will be in our um, examples repo and in the video, in the YouTube video, we will I will add a link to it. So you can also then have a look at it uh, on your own. Um, Short, it's an ASP.NET ASP uh, core web application, uh, which has a, a SQL server in the background. Um, we use uh, Docker to run it and also for testing. And it's uh, uh, a form where you provide some data, it's our community content submission page, example application. You fill it out and, and press submit and the, the reason, so, so why we are why doing here screenshots is, so um, this is one of the use cases where we, are, where we ask when it's about this feature that the people wanted to see how does the, the browsers look at the end of the step. So if, if, this, if the scenario is failing, they see at this on the screenshots. Okay, what is happening? Why is this failing? 
if it's that obvious, depends on the error. And, and this helps, you don't have, okay, the scenario is failing, then you have to uh, run it perhaps locally to see something, then it's so quickly um, gone all that's complicated now. You get with that, you get the screenshots after each step and you see what's happening. And after step is also executed if the, I remember correctly when the um, step failed. So you have also for the failed step, you see the screenshot. Um, one of the um, scenarios, uh, I showed you the output, this is some name validation. So it's the validation that the field is filled out and, and that what we, see, what we see. So when we look at, again at probably, so we filled, is this now the filled out? Yeah, must provide a name. That's the, the first scenario here. And then the name chain though is provided. And in this screenshot, we see that we just, and a chain though in the field. All right, thanks Andy. Um, I guess you kind of answered Chris's question. He wanted a high level overview of what we are trying to accomplish. So yeah, we had this application, fill out some forms and the, during the testing, um, if a step failed or not, um, screenshots were taken and uh, we used the output API to display those attachments. So you can actually keep track of what happened I mean, you could use it. This is how we used it in our use case. You can use it the way you want. Um, Andy, we have another question around where are the screenshots uh, saved? So uh, that's that's up to you. Um, what I'm doing here, so if you're not familiar with the API, I'm using a library called Boa Constrictor who um, brings the screenplay pattern uh, to .NET. And I save all the screenshots uh, in a screenshots directory with some random file name. And there is it locally. Um, we don't do any magic here in the add attachment method uh, with the files. So um, this, uh, we, we take the policy providers and this uh, will get forwarded to the um, appropriate API. And in a CI CD case, sorry, you have to see that you put the files somewhere that is shareable. So, in the case of then living doc generation, a CI CD is, but I show you one solution for that afterwards. Um, but this is highly dependent on your setup. So, um, you, you you need to do something of what is working for you and what is available for you to save the screenshots. Exactly. And I think the main message would be that if you later on share this and you've saved them locally, they're not going to be able to access it. So that's something to keep in mind when you're uh, configuring that. Um, another question for Mark, are the attachments, hold that John, are the attachment images being saved separately as files or are they being embedded into the log file? Um, as, so that depends what the runner is doing. So we are at the end, we're calling the end unit API and I don't think uh, they added to a log file. I, only, I think uh, it's only a reference there and the files. Um, but as I said, you, you have to handle the, the files, the real files on your own. And um, uh, got another question. Presented project solution will be somewhere shared to test it yourself locally. Yeah, as I said, it will be in our uh, spec, for example, GitHub repository. Um, I put a link to it in the video description of the recording. There you can find it. Um, it's is there... already there. It's not just so <laughs> already there, but not in the master branch. Cool. <laughs> yeah, we'll be there soon. Maybe check tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, um, it's it's after the webinar. Cool. Yeah, even better. Um, we got another one from Jonathan. Um, is there a way to add base sixty four image on the uh, iSpec flow output helper? 
interface. So we, as we use it to do on extend reports, okay? Uh, no, so uh, this interface doesn't embed images anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's only the pass and what is happening with the pass depends on the implementation. I, I to be honest, I don't currently know what any unit or MS test, I think both has attachment uh, functionality, what they, what they do with the files. Um, I think they're only a link, there's only also only the pass in a tier X file. So nothing there. Cool. Um, I guess the next question kind of takes us to the next part of the webinar. Um, Rebecca wants to know, um, this is how to display these in your living documentation. Yeah, that's that's the next part. Yeah. Um, before uh, that, I would like to answer the question from Rene. Is the interface ThreadRef in ThreadCount bigger one? Yes, it is. <laughs> Easy one. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't produce anything anymore that's not thread safe. Okay. And uh, how do we limit we screenshots? We learned lessons. <laughs> um, we got another one, Andy. How to limit yep. screenshots taking only when tests fail? Well, I think that's up to you to... Uh, that's... Um, uh, I can quickly show that in code. So what you could do is, let's say, not the scenario, but the, if the step fails, because I have this here. So you can, when you request the scenario context, your context injection, you have on the scenario context um, scenario execution status. And if you say it's not okay, then I'm to the, okay, okay, give this an if. So only if the scenario execution status is not okay, then the screenshots is make, made. So you can get this information from the scenario context class. Um, there are also other informations there, scenario info, get the description, title, the list of tags. And so, so from there you, you get them to know, get also test error, the exact, ex, uh, the exception that is thrown. So in this, in that case, what you want to do, this is the, there you can get the data to check if this is done. But you have to do this on your own. Cool, thanks Andy. Um, okay, so can we use Specflow? Is it only used for .NET or can we use it with Java? Um, yeah, let's answer this in the Q&A se section. Yeah, we'll, we'll answer this later. Good, cool. um, All right. but let's continue. Uh, the second part, how it looks in Living Talk. One reminder because I saw it, please use the Q&A tool and not the chat. Uh, yeah. for, the, for the people who are, are late, it's, it's hard for us to monitor both. And with the Q&A tool, we can make a checkbox and we know that we answer it. Uh, because we want to answer all your questions and don't leave exactly something missing there. Good. Um, how does it look in Living Talk? Back, back to demo, no slides. So um, I create, so for this same application, um, I configured a TeamCity project and build. So we can see here, um, yeah, right, quite, quite new, an hour ago, uh, they were executed. And, and we have, when we see, see here, um, we have some test metadata and we see again, here all the screenshots uh, that we sent with the end unit API with the output API. So this is because we're using this the underlying runner API, it's then all nicely integrated in all the tools that looks for the standard stuff. And um, now everything fits together. And this is something important for us. We don't want to reinvent, really reinvent the wheel when there are already stuff is here. So that's that's Team City, and then we have here in Living Doc, uh, a report tab where this the Living Doc um, 
from the application. So we have everything still looks normal. And let's expand this. So, and we, we changed two things. One, the first thing I show you, it's not relevant for the test output, ah, slightly relevant. So what we added now here is this scenario, this feature file has a background and yeah, to be able to also display the test output for the background. Now you have, in case you have a background here, some collapsible area background step where you can again get the background steps here displayed. At the scenario, if you have longer uh, feature files, you can save a lot of scrolling as before. And probably some of you should already saw it. There's now this nice show test output button. And when you press it, the output is here. This is how it looks like. Um, I quickly open a local generated one. Yeah, I was going to ask you to zoom in a bit, but if you... This is too... Yeah. Team City is too... too small, isn't it? Small here. So back here, so show test output. And how does it look like? So what is that? Is it here? So we have always the step and, and the stuff that is, is around. So we have here our before scenario output, number of entries. And here on the right side, you always see where this output happens. So this happened in a before scenario hook. And the current URL and here the link to the screenshot is was made in an after step uh, binding. And when I click here now, the image opens in a new tab and you can have a look at it in full size. And yeah, that's all in the after step. And if we, oh, I did not add this in this. Okay, I'll to show you another one because uh, it's not here, there it is. So this is from a second second project. This is here. Uh, okay, this has no test execution, good. Um, i show you this in a moment, um, how the output looks like under a step. But this is um, how it generally works and you ever see everywhere that works. And this works also uh, if you're three, three methods deep somewhere. So um, here we call it in direct, we have it implemented in the hook. But if you have three layers of code in it and call the API, you would still see here that it was an after step. This was important for us that it's, it's transparent from where does the output come from. Good. Um, how do we get to this? So let's, I should generate one for the second project because I forgot to do that. Um, it's that didn't change anything for you, so there's no change in in uh, terms of generating living docs. Yes. Yeah. No. So yeah. the only change, I guess, is to upgrade to the latest version. Yes. If you're on an older version, please upgrade so you can actually see your test output. That is the only change. Otherwise, the way you generate it, it's it's the same way as it was before. Nothing has changed. Um, I will have further details on this. I'm going to share the documentation about this. It's already online. Um, if you go to our website, to our docs page and uh, navigate to SpecFlow executions, you will see output API there. I will also put the link in the chat for everyone to go there. This should cover everything. You need all the basics exactly. Um, how to set this up. And um, probably some good reads there on context injection and also hooks as well. And um, how it looks like in living doc. Yeah. Um, yeah, that should find all, all, all the details there. Um, uh, and we got the question from Rene around, can I write HTML to write line? I write uh, HTML. Mm. Hmm. 
I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> don't know the answer to that. Um, <laughs> I, I would, let's say, I would hope that we escape all the formatting stuff and you could not, but I would have to check with the team. So yeah. if it is possible, it's, I would say it's a bug because this would make stupid. Uh, yeah, you could make bad things then inject some HTML code into it. Um, I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's not the intent, the, the intent there with the right line text. So not sure if that's something that is. Yeah, if, if you want, if you want, if you ask him this because you would like to uh, see the images directly here, um, then uh, wait, because we know that we got already the feedback that, that uh, images seen here directly would be nice. And it's probably be in the next, in the next version that we display the images directly here. Yep, and if you want to contribute to the speed of that development, you can go to this link that I just pasted, which are feature request page, and then uh, ask for it there. And uh, the more votes you get, the more likely it is that we're going to start working on it. So check out our feature request page. Um, yeah, yeah, Brenna also wants to put videos there. So yeah, definitely go to the feature requests and um, vote for that. Yeah. So, and now what I wanted to show you, now we have the output for a normal step. And we have here, I, I, it's, it's the, the project is testing some API and I'm outputting the rest body as, as test output here. Um, and that's it, this way it looks like, uh, yeah, you see it's how it looks like on a step. What is here? Cool. Yeah. Um, that's wonderful. Um, before the next question, also, I want yep. to show you something additionally. So what we also added is um, for the living dot command line tool, and I think also for the Azure DevOps uh, task. So all what we're showing, it's it's working in in it's working in Azure DevOps also in the spec for plus living doc for Azure DevOps. Uh, the, where you have done, yeah. File saving stuff is always a problem, but it's always the same. So what we did is we added a new parameter also, include test output, all and none. And with that, it makes it possible uh, when we generate this and now say include test output none. We're now generating a living doc file. So we have, we collect the data behind that, but we generate it with the test output. So if you need a version that you can share with people outside of your team where you don't want to, where you don't want to give them this information, it's a command line parameter and and they don't don't get it. So you could add in your pipeline uh, a second step. So first you can generate it with with the test output for, for your team. And then you can uh, generate a, a, an instance without the test output that you can share them with your customer also. So that's them. It's not in the HTML at all. Um, so. All right, so that's one way to just, uh, but kind of, it, it kind of works like the toggle there, the test results toggle. But yeah, but this on one a you just, yeah, permanent base. Exactly, on a permanent base on the on the output. So yeah, you can kind of hide it depending on the, the audience of your living doc. Um, we kind of answered the question from an anonymous audience as well. Is there any additional configurations for living doc in Azure DevOps? No, not really. Um, I don't think it's no different. Um, let's see. Um, we got one question from uh, oh, I can't pronounce it. How to take screenshot when only verification step is there and upon the test failure? Uh, 
Yeah, on the test filler. So uh, in that case, I would use, um, uh, you have to combine multiple stuff from, from, from stack. So I would start with, uh, with uh, after scenario hook, where I implement this, and then you can check me on the scenario context again, what I showed before, um, the, the status. Uh, I have it here somewhere in the document. Okay. Yeah. Ali, there's something missing in documentation. Is it? You have to add it. Yeah, the, the test error and the status is not here. Okay. Um, yeah, we will add this. So this is what I showed you before. It's on this scenario context class. Um, we have this test error property or the scenario execution status. With that, you can check the status of your scenario. And then in this, if you call your, the method of your tool to generate the screenshot. So there are so many, many ways how to create a screenshot. We can't abstract this for you. Uh, there was some ideas, but it wasn't feasible. Uh, there are too many variables and environments we could not cover everything um so then you make your screenshot and put the path where you saved it to the call the api with the with the path to there and that was it cool um and the sita wants to know is the screenshot functionality available with specful plus excel no so yeah. so spec first specful plus excel is only supporting spec for two, three, two, four, and and uh, we probably don't uh, develop this further. There is a successor, not yet on that feature level, but uh, we're working it as backflow.external data. Um, currently a little bit limited, but we are currently uh, improving it uh, to make it more useful and. Uh, get some of the limitations out there. Um, so have a look, takes still is, takes some time, it's not yet a replacement for spec for Excel, mm -hmm. but it will be there. And and from what you make the screenshots is, is, is it's it's your spec for Excel uses Excel as input for feature files. So it's still, you don't automate Excel with that. So you get only the data from Excel. So you still automate in another application. And for that, you want the screenshots. And that depends how you automate the application. Cool. Um, and we got some more general living doc questions coming. Um, yeah, then, then let's, let's, let's make let's our Let's wrap last... it up and then we go to Q&A. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Wrap it up, wrap it up. It's... Uh, I'm, I'm finished with the demo. <laughs> we, we, Fantastic, yeah. We move uh, smoothly into the Q&A session, but before mm -hmm. we continue answering your question, we would like that you answer us a question. Exactly. So I will launch the first poll. I know. Oh, I'm still sharing the results. Okay. So poll number two. What is your current biggest frustration when working with the Specful Plus Living Doc? Probably give the guys a. And at this time, please use the chat. If you have <laughs> other, please use the chat and write it there. Because Zoom doesn't have a text box for this poll. Yeah, we can only put multiple choice in QA. So it's, uh, yeah, we'd like to hear from you guys. If yeah, the other is important for us, that's why we want to. Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, yeah. If you're not using a Specful Living Doc or any of our products yet, that's okay. I hope this webinar gives you a good overview and um, you go check it out. Yeah, it gives us. Yeah. It's a good intro.
Good. Cool. Um, um, let me just four. end the polling and share the results. All right. So 37% ability to create more flexible reports, followed closely by ability to view historic test runs, um, ability yeah. to share and collaborate with my teams and stakeholders, and four responses with other, which so, I guess one of so, them was not using Specflow yet. So for the for the historic test runs, there is a feature request in our forum. And there are already some discussion and it needs needs more votes. So go there yeah. and upload the feature request. This, yeah. this what I'm what we are showing you today. We made this, we priorized this high on our backlog because it was so highly upvoted. It's the second upvoted, most upvoted feature request we had there, and because of your input. We we reprioritized and made it earlier. Exactly. So you have influence what we are doing. Please please use use this power. Uh, we want to do we, we want to create stuff that helps you, and for that we need to know what will help you, and the feature request form is one of the best places for that. And it's the quickest. So you quickly log in with your Specflow account and push the plus one button, the upvote button, and done. That's it. Um, yeah, I already shared the feature request link in the chat. Um, please, uh, yeah, go there and uh, vote on your favorite features. Um, and yeah, I think we can move to the official yeah. Q&A session. <laughs> And I'll uh, take a look at some general questions. Um, I will start with the most general one, which is um, living documentation. Can you give us the best real life sample of how you can use living documentation? Best real life sample. Um, the best real life sample, so would be three webinars ago, uh, what we did. Um, a real life example of, uh, so in this webinar, we, we told the story how a feature involves within a sprint. So you start, so in, in, in Siri, I know that's not always possible, but it's this the Siri. And I think all what we should aim for is, is you start the sprint, you have for, for your, start the sprint with uh, the story, the PBI prepared, and you have already the scenarios and you have you see it in the stand up in the living talk. Okay, it's there, so there, but it's not executed yet. All yellow steps are bound. And over the time of the of the uh, sprint, um, it gets first read because bindings are there, but not the functionality, and someone needs screen. And you see it there. So this is the test, the reporting side of the living doc. So you you see how the feature the, is evolving when it's working. And because it's living documentation, you know, you, you described it with a concrete example, you know, this is working in your application. And living documentation is also something that helps, is, is really helping you afterwards. So you implemented the feature three months ago and then you get some question from a user or a stakeholder, how is this working? And Let's be honest, who can remember details of a feature that you implemented three months ago or four weeks ago? And that's that's when it's go. You don't have to, to, to search your backlog with all the closed and done stories to find it out. No, you go to the living documentation, open the one HTML file, search, search for it. Uh, search for a keyword, say, Privacy policy, you see where privacy policy mentioned, and you see, okay, yeah, okay, that's how it's it's it, it should work. And have again a concrete example um, to see uh, how it is working. And, and that's that's for me the power of living documentation. You have on one place all the information how your application is behaving. And if it suddenly behaves differently, you see it's because of on the on the test execution status, because it's suddenly red or not green at least. 
And you don't have to go to a backlog with thousands of items to find the one PBI where we did the one change to the system. And probably a feature has multiple PBIs. So you need hours to get a sum of all these small changes to, to remain, remain, to get again in your head how, how the stuff is working. And with Living Dog, when you have this in scenarios, you have the end result how it is working right now in, in some seconds, if you find it for the right keywords. So that's that's the real life. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks Andy. Andy. Um, yeah, we, we have, have, we, have um... we, we have a, a, a six, six or seven minutes video on our YouTube channel where we show this this workflow. And there's also the webinar recording of this. It's um, even dog goes into overdrive. I think it was that. Yep, that was yeah. the one. Um, yeah, that's what I was gonna say, Andy. We have heaps of content that would uh, kind of give you an idea on how a living dog really plays into your uh, development lifecycle and how you can really uh, utilize it for different roles. So um, I will uh, paste some of the blogs and the videos on from our YouTube channel in the chat later on. Um, Andy, do you have any advice for usage of living dogs within tests triggered in release pipeline as opposed to build pipelines? Um, uh, what, what is the exact question again? Do you have any advice for um, using a living doc in the release pipelines as opposed to build pipelines? Um, it it works so it advice so um you can use the living dog generator spectral plus uh living dog for azure devops in both of them and and they are working so um what kind of advice are you looking for yeah i'll leave that to the participant to be a bit more specific um how do you use Specful extension to bring Living Doc from Eclipse to Azure DevOps? I'm not sure if. I... Um, so for me, Eclipse is an IDE, and Azure DevOps. So I don't get. Perhaps the person can also elaborate a little bit more. Uh, how they, they are connected. Azure DevOps is the CI CD system where you run your build and your living dog is generated. And Eclipse is your IDE that you lose locally. So uh, I have to feel like I'm missing something here. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll leave that to the participant to give us more info. And I did the Java question has come up again. So is this for, can this be used uh, with yeah. Java? So, so only use for .NET application or can we use it for Java? So um, it depends how you autom automate it. If you automate your Java application from the outside via black box, then you can, or you have a black box approach, then you can use backflow to automate anything. If it's a web a browser application, if it's a rich client, if it's a mobile application, because in this Specflow you're using, Specflow doesn't have any automation built in. You're using different libraries to do the stuff. We are using Selenium and Boa Constrictor for, for, uh, for the web automation stuff here. You could, but also you could use uh, Appium and the Windows app driver for automate the WPF application or a, a Java application. So if you do a black box testing, you have this, this layer in between, between Specful and your application, how you control it. And there you can use anything what is available in .NET. So your automation code is written in .NET because Specful only supports .NET. Um, that you need to write in .NET. Um, if you want more white box, no more white box, a connected testing approach where you call APIs directly from a from from the Java application, there is some .NET project IKEY VM to make a connection between .NET and Java, but 
I'm not sure how good this work is working. Um, probably in that case, uh, Cucumber for Java uh, would be a better fit. Yep. Depends how you want to automate, how you are automating the application, primarily. Exactly. Cool. Thanks for that, Andy. And um, so Jeffrey is asking, uh, is Specflow Living Dog Generator coming soon for Azure DevOps? Is there any update on this? But uh, I believe it's already there, isn't it? Um, yeah, Pr naming is hard also for products. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say it that way. Um, so there is Specflow plus Living Dog. And this has two versions. One is the generator, Specflow plus Living Dog generator. I think it's better shown in the documentation. Uh, the Living Dog generator. And then we have Specflow plus Living Dog for Azure DevOps, which, which integrates nicely into Azure DevOps directly. Um, yeah, maybe show us a quick. Right summary of that yeah i'm not sure if... it's in the bookshop so, so spectral plus living dog for azure devops it's there um yeah this one will still have uh, this this example has no test output but it's there it's we released both at the same time they have nearly the same feature set um so that's already there yep exactly it's already there it's uh, embedded in there and um the what andy just showed you was the step-by-step -step guide on how to set it up in azure devops um i will link that in the chat so you, if you want to check that out um you can uh, yeah it's a it's a four-step guide on how to set it up in azure devops for a living doc so super easy and simple just have to download a few things. Um, Andy, I will go to back to, yeah. Uh, is there a way to version living doc, for example, to save results from version one, even though I'm on version two? Um, um, this one from Louise, yeah. Yeah, so not with Azure DevOps, only I, you need to do it manually at the moment because uh, as Paul too, there is no historic um, runs available. So what you can do is on the CLI, um, there is, let's just test it. There is some minus O parameter output where you can specify the file name of the generated HTML file and put their name, put the timestamp, put their version, in it uh, depends on your project. So there you can do manually your versioning and you need to uh, say then which files you want to save and which when it gets overwritten or not. So only, um, only men, so you have to do the work on your own. Yep. It's not out of the box there. But uh, you're also not the first person to ask this. So <laughs> we've had this come for other users as well. So back to the feature request page. Um, okay, so Andy, we have another question around storing images with the output API, but this yes. time, where do we store images in the scenario in, in Azure DevOps so we can see them in Living Doc? Do you have yeah. any recommendations there? That's, that's sadly, Azure DevOps is lagging there with features. Mm -hmm. um, so in Teams, it was, it's, it's quite nice to set up. Um, the way I would go with, for Azure DevOps, and it, I would save the images on a, a Azure Blob Storage on, on Azure and so. In, my, in the automation here, it's not saving locally, but I would upload it uh, to a Azure, uh, Azure Blob Storage, or uh, there's also Azure Files. There's, I looked yesterday into it. There's four or five options how to save files on Azure. Uh, you take the one that you like, save it there, and then put the, an URL to the file 
here and then you have it in 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 living doc yeah sadly um azure devops though doesn't have a, a file store in integrated somehow where we could could uh, upload these files there um, it's, it's it's quite lagging i think uh, we have here also some also for sharing publishing we have here for other uh ci cd so for team cd yeah, this is uh third party reports you can use that's 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 what i'm using here so this is quite easy in team city so in the build you say what artifacts you want to save i have saving the living doc html and the png and then you could do in um, add a report tab on build or project we have to find the path to the HTML and um, this works as you saw quite nicely out of the box. A few the images and get it open. Sadly, I'm a big fan of Azure DevOps, but Team City is doing it much nicer and much easier. Yeah, got to give it to them. Yes. Um, Okay, so that kind of answered the um, Artem's question. How do you integrate Living Doc with Team City? Um, I've got an interesting one here, Anthony, and it's something that I wanted to point out as well. So Anthony is asking, could you include screenshots dynamic data? Is it possible to include static pictures, say some markup in the feature file that includes the picture in Living Doc? So what we have to really distinguish here is the difference between the images from the output API and the images you can add to your feature file and later on display them in Living Doc. So Living Doc supports Markdown. So you can add images that would, uh, yeah, if you go to Living Doc page, enhancing, exactly. So I will put this in the chat. So there you go. That's a calculator, a very simple um, calculator image that we added to the feature file. We did this when we were writing the feature file. So yes, the, the use of this image is different to the output API, obviously. That's for more technical, the running tests, taking screenshots, that sort of things. But if you want to add a static image, you, this was always in Living Doc. So full support for Markdown. And um, I will put this. Yeah, link you can here. use it in a, the feature description and the scenario description. Uh, yes, it has to be right. It's in the documentation exactly how it works and where you have to add the image. But yes, it will render it nicely in your feature files if that's what you're looking for. Um, let me just, uh, okay, I will put the link in the chat for everyone to find out how to do that. Um, any upgrades on Specful Plus Excel currently stalled? What is the future roadmap for Specful Plus Excel? Um, future is Specful external data. That, yeah. that's that's the that's the answer for that yeah exactly not just excel external data yeah cool and um, this is this backflow external data is open source it's available in our repository so it's on nuget but the source is here and quite a little bit limited at the moment as it's only supporting one parameter and only uh, from a fixed JSON file, so fixed name JSON file, uh, but we're currently uh, enhancing this that you can specify from which data and also multiple parameters. And I think I saw already CSV uh, that you can provide a CSV and not only a JSON data. So, uh, there's some stuff coming in the next weeks, hopefully. Um, and just, just started the work again on this, so it takes some time until you see an output of that. But open source contributions are welcomed always. Exactly. Um, this one, I'm just putting a link in the, in the chat. Um, uh, one of the participants wanted a step-by-step -step guide on uh, how to set up Living Doc in Azure DevOps. Um, once you go to this page, the generator is right under it. So this should uh, point everyone in the right direction in terms of how to set up Living Doc. Um, and another question from uh, Darshana. If we are creating feature file while running the project, 
uh, will living dog work um, yes so it's part of your pipeline and if you add more feature files to it it will get updated with every run so every time you generate a new spec for living doc you will have your, your the latest feature files in there that's the last one right? um okay is there an easy way to get a unique file name for the screenshot without using a random file name um uh times times that probably not so um you could hash something make a hash out of it um net is providing this api and it worked quite well for this case probably i would i would have at least one for in a real project i would have some constant thing and then this random file name or a guid added there but at least that when i look at all the, the files there i see okay this all oh, these files is made on this location so i would if i had more i would uh calls to the, for the api i would probably do something like that and if you don't that don't like to get random file name, then I would use a GID, new GID to string, and it's an N to have no dashes and so there. Um, but this is up, up, up to you. Uh, thanks for the tip, Sandy. Um, this one, I think, is more like a feature request. But uh, within Azure, can we um, see multiple test results within Living Doc against multiple test runs? So specifically no. executed within release pipelines. No. That... Yeah. yeah. Yes and no. So what what you can what you can do is if you have multiple release pipelines and something, you could. Not with Azure DevOps, respect for plus living dog for Azure DevOps, but with the generator, you can merge the test results together to have it once and then generate um, on it. So if you do some some uh, splitting to of the scenario, so you you have twenty scenarios, you execute ten on one release stage and the other ten on the second release stage. Uh, you have the problem that you get now two test execution chases and you you can merge it together. So the minus T, uh, you can, there are specific more, more chases. So what you need to do is save the, at the end of the release stage of the, of the steps, you need to upload somewhere the, the JSON file and in a stage at the end, what is executed when everything is done, you get again this JSON files and merge it together and then have one living documentation of with, with uh, the split test execution before. Um, that's that's where it's possible. Um, it's um, if you have multiple test results or for the same scenario, you get where is living dog? You will have here some information that there are multiple data for multiple runs, but you see only the first one. Then I don't remember correctly. Um, so that that is what is currently possible. Yeah, using the generator, right? Yes, using the generator. Cool. Um, uh, in, in C, now you could also use the Azure for DevOps build task. Yeah, they will also can specify multiple uh, test execution chains. Yeah, I saw that at the bottom of the page. Yep, you can actually pass uh, like two JSON files in there and have them both displayed. Um, all right, so. We have another one uh, from Rinko. Um, Azure DevOps has extension of Specful Plus Living Doc. We are using Cucumber for feature files. How can we use this extension for connecting Eclipse feature files to Azure DevOps? So 
it fixed okay. feature flaws. I think um, it's the tool from Cucumber that they write feature yeah, flaws. Yeah, so, so um, Spectral plus Living Dog, Generator or, or for Azure DevOps, uh, a set of features works plainly on feature files. So all the search and so it doesn't matter if you automate it with Specflow or Cucumber or something else. So that's, that is working. So you can use this if you can use Specflow plus Living Doc. For that, you test results, everything that is with execution, this is currently limited only for Specflow. Um, only Specflow is providing the data for Living Doc. Uh, that this is possible. So, but all the, the static markdown and so it's it's all all works also with when you use Cucumber for that. And um, I can show this quickly. So one with, with linking is what 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 is there is now this is the link link to ALM systems. <laughs> Here, so a feature of Living Doc is you can put uh, tags on your feature scenario. You can configure what this is and then have the ID. And then you get some um, links generated in your living doc to go there. I think I have my I'm looking CC. Yeah, there, no, I did not generate it correctly, so. Um, the idea is like that this. that's the work item number. Yes, that's and when the you work click item on number. it, and when you click on it, it will open it. And it doesn't have to be Azure DevOps. I actually, we actually set this up to work with uh, Jira in the previous yeah, this, webinar. Yeah, this is from. Uh, yeah, that is from Jira's. that one. Yeah, I remember that actually. That work item number. <laughs> and um, yes, you can connect it to anything. It's just a link, so it's very useful because it sits on top of your feature file, and you know exactly what the work item on that is so and um yeah so I, I guess the answer to the question is as long as it's a feature file you could generate living doc but you're not going to have the test results in there so yeah. my advice is use specflow instead of cucumber but um, <laughs> yeah but depends what we can use but exactly but um i would say 60 70 percent of the features of living doc also works with with cucumber Yep. And again, if you want to see test execution results in Living Doc for something other than Specflow, please go to the feature requests forum and, mm -hmm. and uh, upvote there or create. I'm not sure if it's there already or not. Yes. Um, Andy, speaking of uh, work items, we have a question around uh, any updates on Azure DevOps work item integration with Gherkin? Um, no, no, nothing, nothing. You, we did some experiments, but weren't, weren't happy how it looks like and works. And Azure DevOps is with the, what possible for extension a little bit limited in one, in some places. So it's quite hard to integrate nicely and have a nice workflow there. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. that's the that's where we're at with that. Um, so, question from uh, Jonathan uh, around images again, Andy, for yeah. the output API. Um, if we store these uh, images on the build repository of Azure DevOps to attach it to Living Dog, it wouldn't be a risk to reach the store capacity, the storage capacity. Is there a possibility to instead of attaching image pub, we just pass base 64 strings? I think we had that question as well. So yeah, uh, similar one. So the, the output API and living doc is currently not doing anything with the files. So it's simply you you provide a path, and we provide we pro make a link out of it. That is what is currently happening. Um. So if you if you provide a base sixty four. Uh, image as a parameter, you see here base 64 links. So this is not how it, it's work and will not work. Um, the question is what is built repository? There are built artifacts. 
Uh, I know, and there are the code repository. I would not check in the screens in your repository because it would trick another CI pro system, uh, probably. Um, with the built artifacts, the question is, how do you get a URL that you could use here? Um, because I don't think you have any way to get to this URL anymore. And yeah, again, that's the, the stuff where Azure DevOps limiting because this, if it's the build artifacts, what you're meaning, um, they're only available at builds. You don't have this in release stages. I don't know why, but yeah, if you find a way to easily share files with multiple stages in a release pipeline, please let me know. <laughs> I did not yet found a good solution, an easy one. Cool. Um, yeah, we had a couple of more questions around Eclipse that we already covered. And the last one, how to take screenshot when only verification step is there and upon the test failure. Uh, we did this already. Mm -hmm. That was that was with uh, before uh, after scenario hook uh, scenario context status checking and then only call the API. Cool. So what yeah, is the that, last question? That was the last question. Um, we're gonna share this repo. I mean, it's already shared. Um, it should be online soon, and um, you can yes. uh, check this out uh, if you have any further. Questions around how Andy did all the magic he just did, um, check out the <laughs> repo and you will find out. And if you have any more questions, you can always ask him. Don't ask me. No, but you can ask me. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, uh, if, if, if you have questions, ask them in the community forum. The yep. team is, is monitoring this. Um, as, as Ali mentioned, and we mentioned a lot of times, it's getting uploaded to the YouTube channel. I will upload it after, quite afterwards, YouTube is taking time to processing so yeah. probably friday at, at noon available yeah. and yeah you all get an email with also with the link to it in two days and then it should be available there and i will put the link to the repository with the code in it and you can have a look at it awesome for yourself thank you so much andy um we are 10 minutes over time thanks for everyone that uh we're still around. Um, yeah, we went a little bit over time. And um, yeah, thanks for joining. Looking forward to the next webinar to show you guys some cool features. Yes, and and one 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 hint for you all that stays long. Perhaps check tomorrow during the day our website. Yeah, take a look in there. <laughs> something uh, like small, th small, there small might be something for you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Andy. Yeah. Thank you everybody for staying this and I hope you learned something and see you at the next one. Yeah. Bye.